Honestly, it has happened to all of us. You're in a moment where there's a really good opportunity for a shot and you're taking the picture, but you don't have the right shutter speed, ISO, or maybe your white balance is off. Let's say you take a photo and it's severely underexposed, or let's say even your shutter speed is so low and your ISO is so high that the image is not sharp and it's very noisy. Don't delete the photo. I will go through a few steps you can follow to restore any severely underexposed photo so that you can bring back the sharpness, reduce the noise, bring back color, and all the details that might be missing. All right, so these are two photos that I've taken in which I have a pretty high shutter speed, but the reason for this was that there was light outside while I was taking photos, but as the sun is setting, the light is constantly changing. Therefore, my shutter speed of 1 over 125 was not sufficient enough to let enough light pass through, and therefore this came out so dark. And even this one, it's a little blurry, very noisy, and even here, I reduced the shutter speed and bumped up the ISO so we could get some light, but I didn't want the shutter speed to be too low so that the image would be very, very blurry and shaky. So as a result, it's very noisy and a bit not sharp. So these are the before. And now take a look at the after. It actually took me about two hours to edit this photo and about an hour and a half to do this photo. So I won't go into that much detail, but I will show you some principles you can follow in order to begin to bring back contrast, light, sharpness, and clarity to your photos. So we're going to quickly run through both of these photos. So going through this photo first things first no chromatic aberration we want everything to be flat let's actually also do the same thing for this photo but let's do one at a time we won't bounce back and forth too much first things first we need to bump up the exposure let's put that pretty high but we don't want to go too high because the higher we go it's going to get even noisier so let's try something like 3.85, that looks good. And the thing is, this is a raw image. If you were to try to do this with a JPEG, it will look super distorted, a lot of missing information. So always make sure you shoot with raw images. So we're bringing this up. We can actually maybe bring a bit of contrast. Let's try 25. Highlights, yes, we want the highlights because there's water, we want the light reflection to be more pronounced. Let's open up the shadows a bit to see a little bit of the details of her hair. White, we'll actually decrease white because we wanna actually bring back, bring back the other colors in the water. We don't want so much white. Uh, blacks, we'll, we'll leave blacks the way it is for now. Dehaze, anything that's hum humid and let's bump up the vibrance. So already it's looking way better. Let's let's take a look at that. Goodness, <laughs> the before and after already it's looking way better. Let's actually continue. So with these things done, now we want to go over to the calibration. And now we want to bring out some of these tints. So there's hints of green. You can't see it right now. There's hints of green and purple in the water. So really, I, this can go either way. I could bring it to make it a little bit more teal. Or I can bring it to make it a bit more purple. So because for the original photo, I made it a bit purple, the one that I edited, let's try actually going more in the teal direction. And we're going to bring this up. And then we'll saturate it to bump up a little bit of these colors. And now let's and now let's bring up the blues. Uh, negative ten is fine, and then we saturate it just a bit. Right. So now moving on, we're going to go to the HSL adjustment. Let's start off with the saturation. Let's 
not really picking up the orange or yellows. Let's try, let's go to the greens and the aquas. Let's definitely boost that. Yeah, we want to bring that up a bit. Blues as well. Well, not too much. Let's try something like this. Now, actually, we want to look at the magenta in her shirt and the sky. Let's bring that up just a bit too. 39. Now to luminance, we are going to Let's illuminate that a bit. Aqua, we're gonna illuminate it somewhat. And the same thing with the blues. Purple, slightly. Slightly, maybe 21. And then our magenta which part of her skin, because there's a reflection of the light, there's a little bit magenta in her skin as well. Here we go. And then we can work on the hues a bit. Let's tweak these colors a bit. What my aquas. Hmm. Yeah, let's kind of lean it more, make it a bit more green. Blues. Uh, let's make it a bit more, slightly more green. And we can kind of reduce a little bit of the purple that's in the sand. Let's tweak that slightly. Yeah, sweet. And now let's adjust the tint just a bit. Plus one, minus two. Plus two looks pretty good. And then we bump up the saturation. And just like that already, we have something that looks a lot better. So there's a lot more things that could be calibrated to make it a, look a lot better, of course. But for now, this kind of, but this gives you more of a basic understanding of how you can utilize camera raw to start bringing back some of the details. And if we look closely, it's a bit noisy still, unfortunately. So now we're gonna go over to our luminance and we're going to bump this up, but be mindful as you bump this up, you're going to lose a bit of the details in terms of sharpness, things like that. Yeah, that already looks better. The noise is being reduced and we could smooth out the color a bit more. Let's try something like 70. Let's actually bump this up to 60. So smooth it out a lot more. And now look at that. It looks a lot better. And of course you can always take a curve adjustment, lighten the light areas, darken where the colors are a bit. And already, look at that. It's looking really good. And we could do the same thing for this image. So similar procedures. We're gonna turn up the exposure. Let's try one and a half. Let's actually decrease the highlights all the way. We'll, we'll find another way to kind of bring that back. We're gonna let the colors do all the work. So we're also gonna decrease the whites to minus 75. We will open up the shadows a bit, slightly. But actually I do want a bit of contrast. I'll do that, leave that at 10. Get rid of the humidity. We're going to leave this at 30. Bring back the colors here with vibrance, but we'll fine tune it in just a moment. So let's hop on over to, sorry, calibration. Um, I'm gonna go with the purple again. So let's put the tint here. And actually one more thing, we can slightly increase the tints too. Perfect. So back to calibration. For this one, let's make Let's make the purple pop out a little bit more. We go to minus 20, saturate it slightly. We're gonna change the hue a little closer to a lighter green. Let's saturate that. 
Same thing with the blues. Well, not, let's not go too far. Though that does look interesting. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Let's go to HSL adjustments. Same thing. We're going to bump this up just a bit. Yeah, let's actually give that a boost. It's really high, but you're going to see what we're going to do with it. So we can put that down. Aqua, yes, here we go. 40 is good. Yeah, 20. And now let's do the magenta and her skin. Make it pop a bit. And purple. Yeah, we want the purple to pop. Now with luminance, now we can lighten her skin just a bit. Bring back a bit of color to that. Let's do the same thing here. And we could go back here. Let's lower that slightly. Slightly lower this one too. Now with the blues, we definitely want to have a bit of luminance. Same thing with the aqua. Make it bright. Let's do that here as well. And we're gonna bring that to 20. And now let's begin to change the hues slightly. Mm, I kinda like it more like here. Slighten that a bit here. And now let's go to the aquas. I want it to be more of a green, a teal in it, just a bit. Like that. Yeah, we're gonna make that a bit more purple. 10. The magenta, let's change that more towards a red. And just like that. And likewise, it's, there's a lot of noise, as you can see. So what we're going to do is bring up the luminance. Uh, this could be 55. You don't want it to be too much. And wow, look at that. All that noise. And that looks pretty good. Next thing we could do is likewise, let's get a curve in there. Curve adjustment. And that looks fantastic. So there's a lot more calibrations we can do to really make these images good and bring back the sharpness. What we can do is take it into Photoshop or even adjust these settings a little bit more. But those are some of the principles that you can use and follow in order to restore photos that are severely underexposed. So don't worry, next time you take a photo and it's super dark and you know you don't have the right shutter speed, don't worry, keep the photo it could be one of the best photos that you might have in your collection. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Stay tuned for the next one.